What is the ultimate goal of today's revitalized race to reach the moon? Essentially, it centers on the ambition to create a sustainable human footprint beyond our planet. Being the first to land on the moon in the near future is just one aspect of this endeavor. Equally crucial to the ultimate success of this race is the construction and maintenance of a functional lunar settlement. SpaceX is attracting significant attention with its bold initiative to build a lunar base using its massive, fully reusable rockets. Let's discuss it all in today's episode of In Our Studio. First, we'll discuss SpaceX's strategy for developing a lunar station and analyze the key preparations needed to facilitate this endeavor. For many, the United States is seen as the winner of the original moon race, as American astronauts successfully landed on the lunar surface several times throughout the 20th century. This landmark achievement was transformative, changing humanity's perception of our potential. However, this doesn't mean the current race is any less important. In fact, the stakes are much higher now than they were years ago. This new venture is about more than just planting a flag. This includes the goal of establishing a permanent presence, mastering life on the moon, and using it as a launching pad for a new chapter of exploration. This return marks humanity's attempt to establish the first foothold of civilization beyond Earth. A long-term base on the moon could serve as a launching pad for deeper exploration of the solar system. It could facilitate scientific study, resource harvesting, and potentially enable the assembly of spacecraft too large or complex to build on Earth. For this reason, the return of astronauts is only the beginning. Once humans arrive, there will be a need to build a base. This structure must be reliable, safe, and designed to grow gradually. This brings us to the crucial question, how will these bases be built? Many envision their elements being developed on Earth. Many envision assembling their components on our planet, much like how parts of a space station are manufactured before being transported to the moon for assembly. Others consider sending substantial construction machinery capable of converting lunar materials into usable resources. Both concepts are feasible and have been considered for years. However, each presents significant challenges. Transporting large structures from Earth is time-consuming and expensive. Transporting construction equipment to the moon is also quite challenging. And utilizing local resources requires infrastructure that is currently lacking. Because of these constraints, SpaceX has proposed a radically different approach. Instead of manufacturing modules on Earth or building them from scratch on the lunar surface, they could adapt the lander itself to serve as a lunar base. Starship, a large craft intended for the Artemis initiative, has the potential to act as both a transport mechanism and the initial structure for the first lunar outpost. This idea is ambitious and creative, however it immediately prompts the concern of how a vehicle of such height and mass could function as an effective habitat on the moon. To ensure comfort and practicality for long-term habitation, Starship would need to be laid out in a horizontal position. This configuration would also facilitate easier integration with the lunar landscape and future expansions. In traditional thinking, tilting a structure as substantial as Starship would necessitate a gigantic crane or a sturdy support framework both of which would be incredibly challenging to transport to the moon. Bringing such equipment along would contradict the aim of streamlining construction. Consequently, an alternative method must be explored. One of the more practical strategies resembles proposals made by Astrostrom. In this plan, after Starship lands, rovers would manage the surrounding area by clearing and leveling it. Any elevated spots would be flattened and any depressions would be filled in to establish a secure work environment. Following this groundwork, a sizable air cushion would be placed next to Starship. This cushion would be larger than the vehicle itself and engineered to bear its weight. Once the cushion's stability is verified, adjustments would be made to Starship's landing gear. As the legs can fold, two of them would be slowly retracted, allowing the vehicle to tilt towards the air cushion. The cushion would compress softly, supporting Starship's controlled descent without producing abrupt impacts that may harm the craft or its internal systems. After the vehicle settles onto the cushion, the air would be released gradually, lowering the vessel onto the moon's surface. The cushion could then either continue to act as a liner or be removed entirely. Once Starship is secured in place, rovers would start to cover it with a protective layer formed from lunar regolith. This layer would serve multiple purposes, providing radiation protection, enhancing thermal stability, and safeguarding the structure from micrometeor impacts. Simultaneously, the interior layout would be adjusted. As Starship's living quarters are initially designed to be vertical, SpaceX could innovate its internal configuration to enable an efficient horizontal setup. This is one potential vision of how a lunar base by SpaceX might be developed. 
Would you consider this plan superior to other lunar proposals? You can respond with a yes or no in the comment section below. In my view, this approach provides numerous benefits that extend well beyond mere convenience. The most significant immediate advantage is the substantial decrease in time and resources needed to create an operational lunar base. Conventional approaches would necessitate NASA to transport many components of the base, special modules, and construction equipment from Earth to the Moon. Each of these systems is large, complex, and expensive to establish. Establishing a base through this method would require multiple missions carrying significant payloads, with each additional launch increasing costs, dangers, and delays. In contrast, using Starship alone as a lunar base would allow NASA and SpaceX to avoid the logistics of transporting numerous base equipment. They could instead focus on a lightweight and effective inflatable air cushion system that could be stored during transit. The primary technical challenge will involve perfecting the lander's transition from a vertical to a horizontal position. Once this transition is achieved, the entire system can be reconfigured, and the outpost can be prepared for habitation. Timeliness is crucial in this new phase of lunar exploration. A reliable and timely base establishment would allow for the immediate start of scientific investigations, resource extraction, and ongoing development. In a competitive landscape, leading the way in establishing a sustainable presence could impact lunar efforts for years to come. This aspect alone lends substantial strategic significance to this approach. Another significant advantage is maximizing Starship's capabilities. A lander of this size, equipped with advanced life support, energy systems, communications equipment, and extensive internal space, offers far greater functionality than a compact, dedicated lander. If Starship were simply used as a lander and then abandoned, much of its potential would be wasted. Converting it into a lunar base would allow NASA and SpaceX to maintain and reuse the technology integrated within. Adapting it to a horizontal living space maximizes every dollar, every hour, and every engineering innovation used in its design. However, Starship's true strength lies in its long-term possibilities. Its significant dimensions make it an excellent base for a facility that could evolve into a substantial lunar habitat. Initially, living quarters would likely be limited to the nose cone and payload compartment. Even this would provide more space and better amenities than many current space stations. However, once the crew settles in, they could begin expanding the usable area by converting the fuel tank compartment. This process would ultimately result in an internal volume of thousands of cubic meters, which could accommodate laboratories, workshops, storage facilities, and living quarters for multiple astronauts. This capability is one reason why SpaceX backers favor Starship over conventional lunar landers. While smaller landers can facilitate rapid initial missions, they're limited to short-term objectives and minimal cargo capacity. They cannot match the size and flexibility of a repurposed Starship when the time comes to build durable infrastructure on the moon. That's it for today's episode. See you next time.